I, I guess if you're a newer team, it's something that's really good to do just to get that synergy really nailed down across the team. And I, obviously one thing that we have to mention when it comes to Endpoint as a UK CS team is that typically egos do get in the way. And I feel like, you know, as we, we heard from Thomas, like that's going to be a major factor in controlling those egos in the long run to make them a successful team. But here we go. The Pistaround going to be kicking off now on Vertigo in our grand finals here of Blast Rising brought to you by Fantasy Expo. It's Havu Gaming on the CT side and Endpoint on the T side. And they're already making their way in towards the B side. Looking like they're actually going to try a, a cheeky little boost. Get up towards the wood. Have a chance to just peek that headshot angle. Maybe as a bit of a surprise. The utility already being expended. Slowly up close. The kit about to be dropped to the deck. They've got to clear the back angle of the site though. His hoodie is still waiting. I think Thomas has spotted him though. He's not going to be sneaky enough this time. Already a couple of opening picks go the way of the T side. The bomb down and this smoke setup has worked perfectly. Completely sectioning off the site. Not allowing the rotation any vision. And it seems like Endpoint in this round already have everything covered. Well, it comes down to Zori and Saab. And the two on five. This is already going to be difficult to do. Especially with Thomas just rushing straight forward to get the, uh, the last two kills of the round. And that's going to be Endpoint taking the pistol round. Three kills for Thomas. One for Surreal and one for Robin. So a relatively good start. Completely overwhelming them at the B side. And Mojavu, you can never really count them out, especially if, if they do have pistols. But this is going to be tough now. You have the two AKs, the two Mac 10s. Typically, we see teams on the T side of Vertigo generally lean towards that A site. I'm curious if Endpoint, though, we're going to start leaning towards B. Yeah, there's definite benefits, obviously, of this A site hold. It it gives you a lot of map control that basically means that they have to dedicate more players in this direction. I do quite like, though, that teams have actually almost started treating this like Long Dust 2, where you've got these smokes, you try and set players up early on, and then you can kind of rotate people away once you have players in position as like an early warning sign. I guess you compare it to Banana as well on uh, Inferno, where, again, you, you get these deep smokes and you can basically put someone in position. Obviously, in this round, you're not really going to have the same sort of success because, well, they don't have all that utility. They don't have the ability to re-smoke, but they have. Jason managed to get lots of people in position, ready and waiting for the guys at Endpoint. Exactly. Four players here. They're going to trade at least the one for one initially, and well, Endpoint's quickly going to realize the stack's going to be here over at the side, and they've lost a couple of different players. Dodo as well is able to get a kill. Saw as well at the end. Takes down Crucial and turns it into the one-on-one. -on -one. AK versus CZ, and the AK will win. But either way, Havu, investment... <laughs> Pays off well for them getting the four kills and basically taking away one of the, the heavy hitter weapons. Yeah, he may have uh, celebrated that one with a little bit of BM, but I don't think that's really that much of a celebration for the guys at Endpoint. A very, very costly round. And because of this, the round that, well, you'd almost see them as like a bonus where they get to get all this finance built. They make a lot of extra cash. will fall into the next round as well. So the chances are those three SMGs will be kept. I'll be interested to see what they're actually going to do with it. And one of the things I always question with teams so far in Vertigo is how they actually opt to try and fight for mid. Because it gives very quick rotations. That ladder room is fairly valuable to get in on the flank very quickly indeed. Now, in this round at least, it's kind of been negated by both sides. Very little invested, of course. A singular nade for Dotto, which may be able to at least bring a few people low. But this round needs to be kept clean for Endpoint if they're going to have any bonus cash whatsoever going into the future rounds. I was almost expecting Harbour to just invest yet again, by the way. Flashbang comes in. Dotto again able to get one. Trying to make this costly another time. And unfortunately for them, it seemed to work out that way slowly. He's going to fall to the grenade. And Endpoint, multiple players on low HP. But they only lose one. So early 3-0 start for them. Hobby now going to go on the buy up. Pretty much what we expected. And as you pointed out with the middle control, I feel like we've hardly seen teams really utilize mid on the T side. I, I, I've, I feel like it's just generally been left open and we see like the five men executes towards A or the five men executes towards B. Sometimes we see a little bit of a split in towards middle onto the B site, but it seems like teams just kind of fully commit towards one direction. At least the matches we've seen. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of opportunities to, to pull out rotations. The issue is, I feel like there's a lot of favorable duels for the CT side, especially with that elevated Ooh. area in middle now. Both teams taking some fairly hefty early damage and a deep smoke coming in once again. More comparisons can be made with this early B gamble that's coming out for 
the CT side. They're sending that presence over. And I think the T's have realized that the majority of the defense is going to be on that side. And well, it's the classic. You've got your AWPA waiting to try and hold on to the A site if they do go aggressing in this direction. The problem, however, it's very difficult to deny a bomb plan here, especially without any real offensive utility. They don't have any incendiaries. There's no HEs, which although HEs aren't necessarily considered important utility or the most important, I guess you could say. In this sort of scenario, if you can dunk some nades onto the planter, it's so valuable. Well, this glass cannon. AWP looking to do some work for Zori. We talked about him and Slowy together, and there you go. The first shot comes through. It's going to connect as well, so they do get themselves a man advantage. They saw it's on 14 health. Dodo as well, trying to keep the man advantage in their favor, and him. He will take down those two kills with the assist as well. And it looks like we're going to see a very strong hold here out of Havu. And again, as we, we talked about before in, in the match they had yesterday, the alternate attacks, their CT side. They did take eight rounds against the uh, the German squad. So I think if Endpoint aren't careful about this, then they could see themselves losing quite a few rounds on the favored side of Vertigo. Yeah, I, th I think the main thing for Endpoint is they'll have to try and capitalize on the risks that are being taken for Havu. I, I think it's another map where those risks are, are definitely necessary. I don't think you can hold everything all of the time unless you have players just popping off. You can send one man down to basically just kill everyone, and that's not really a, a viable strategy. So, as you can see, last round there was three players on B. Now there's only one going to be left. On to Slowy. But he has utility now. That's why they can afford to do this. They can send players back in other directions and use his utility to try and slow any aggressive plays down. Dotto a little bit more aggressive this time around the side of the A ramp. Crucial was patiently waiting for his aggression, but all he's really given at the moment is a little bit of a love tap and some information, but he does get that entry in the end. Aggression from Sora is going to be punished as well. Now Zori, well, last time he had a hell of a lot of support. Now... It's only that rotation from Hoodie to help him out. Oh, the nade coming through. Now he's going to fall. The bomb still has its way for the site just yet. And Zori, Ooh. what a play out of him. The, the confidence to jump on top of those boxes and go for the shot. Again, ties things up at three apiece. And the bomb should be planted here. Now we do have two smokes and two flashbangs to work with. And Zori's looking for their shot. He's a spot out surreal. And that's going to be an easy shot for him. Three on two now. And Zori might have done it basically by himself. The last two players. Oh, my God, Hoodie. Gets Robin down to 9 HP, and it's looking like Havu might be able to pull off this retake. Still a few low players on either side, and it comes down to Thomas with a double pick. Robin may be low, but it's an AWP up against him, so it may not even matter. Bomb's going to be tapped. The spray is actually enough, however. Robin gets just around the edge of the bomb, and with what is three AKs and a couple of pistols, Endpoint managed to break back straight away. And the CT side are actually in a bit of an awkward position here because they've actually got enough money where a buy in the next round is more than viable. 2,900 in loss bonus will set them up quite nicely. So we're not actually going to see them like break into a, a sort of forced buy battle just yet because it doesn't actually really benefit them. It's not even necessarily that strong of a buy here for Endpoint. I mean, they do have the op save from Zora in the last round, but that's the only thing they really carried over. Robin now on the AK, trying to catch him and getting aggressive, and he will spot out Hoodie. But he's going to fall. Even Slowy, he's gotten aggressive over towards B. Just sitting on the other end of that smoke, and it looks like Hopper just trying to push for information, trying to push for these duels. But unfortunately, they're not able to really win any of them. Of course, I say that. Slowy gets a kill. <laughs> Pretty standard nowadays for me. More amount of cost. But ultimately, a, a much better scenario for Endpoint. Something we haven't really seen from them so far. Like, consider the, the rounds they've won. A couple of them have now only been with one player alive. And one of those was up against a force by just like this. So, starting to stabilize a little bit more on this T side. And Havu, surprisingly, didn't actually retain anything off of Surreal. Like, they've not picked up any sort of weapon down towards B. Maybe we'll go hunting for that in a moment. But... It's possible they expect Endpoint to be a little bit more aggressive in checking to see if there's anybody left, but ultimately it doesn't matter too much. Harvard are going to buy into this next round, but 
Things are starting to slip a little bit away from them here. And although, like, teams definitely can pull up rounds or heavy amounts of rounds on this T side, we have started to see teams start to, like, really gain momentum on this CT side, especially now with the ability to claim control of the ramp, which in the early stages of this map wasn't really viable. So they do have to be careful not to let this one slip out of control, especially as you mentioned, they actually managed to get a lot of rounds on this CT side last time. And that was still only, what, a 16-14? Yeah. Maybe that's some weakness in their T side, or maybe alternate. It'll pull off a good CT side as well. I mean, one good kind of inkling for Hopper, though, is the fact that Zori's been able to hit quite a few shots with AWP. So it seems like he's definitely DM getting into this. Currently tied her first in his team at four kills. And if he can keep hitting shots like this, I feel like we're going to have to see Crucial kind of battle out against him. But it seems like Smoke, Flash, really anything hasn't been able to stop this Finn. And he might have an opportunity for the one-on-one -on -one duel up against Crucial. And they've left the, the B site really light again. They're only leaving slowly there with an AWP as they invest into the double ops setup. So a big commitment on the CT side. And well, they pretty much nailed it perfectly. Yeah, this is so aggressive though. They actually go fighting in versus the T side. And they've been mowed down. These risks being taken by Harvu are just not paying off. And the patience of Endpoint is enough. You mentioned about Zori not missing shots. Well, he just missed one point blank and he's burnt for his sins. Can be left on Slowy and wow, well, there's there's nothing he can do here. This should just be him trying to save. It's a, a one versus three situation with the bomb already planted, no kit, and well yeah, sure he has a smoke, but far more value in the AWP and endpoint they're they're killing it so far. Their A site pushes have a lot of the time been expected by Harvu, but so far they haven't been able to stop it. Well it seems that round came down to Oh, Thomas scared me there. Uh, it all came down to I wonder just... if he'll jump. <laughs> What's that song? Oh my god, I can't think. Oh, it doesn't matter. I was I was more concerned about the way that we saw them go for the engagement on Tramp. Like, I, I respect that play. I like that play. But it seems like maybe there was a missed mis flashbang in there or something. Maybe the timing was a little bit off. Or, or maybe they didn't expect that many players to be facing the, the moment they did chase around the corner. But that obviously didn't work out at all for them. They had the potential to. Uh, unfortunately, they lose an op. I'm going to retain one out of slowly. But he's going to be over at the A site this time, not towards B. It's going to be Hoodie there left alone. And look how aggressive they're getting towards ramp. At least Saw in particular. I think Dodo just got tagged. I mean, I know he got tagged, but I think they'll throw a wall. Once again, we're going to see aggression trying to dominate this ramp control, but thus far it has been all endpoint. Not really been much in terms of success. I think one round they managed to deep smoke it and hold it at least for a moment, but oh, endpoint don't really need to change anything up here. They've been so successful with the plays they've already been making, and now they're going to rotate all the way into this B side once again, just leaving Hoodie with his solo deagle. These smokes I, they're just perfect. Like they, they can't really do anything through it. Just basically having to hold back in response, trying to find maybe some vision over the top. And in the meantime, the Molotov's Jeez. just absolutely ruining the M point of got this A side down to a T and even waiting on the edge of the smoke to kill off the man holding the AWP. This has been a fantastic round for Endpoint. Not only winning those opening duels, but such a safe and methodical execution onto the B side. Honestly, I was more surprised that Slowly even stuck around for that. I mean, two on four. You can save yourself a lot of money by keeping it off into the next round. Yeah, you can maybe punish the economy out of Endpoint by getting a kill or two, but they're still pretty healthy. You know, either way, Crucial on 7800. You have Thomas on 46. We got Robin at 56, so I don't know. I wasn't a big fan of that play in particular, but they switched him back up to the M4. Obviously, Zori's going to have the uh, the big green in his hands another time. But uh, uh, another round uh, out of, I guess, the eight we've seen total, where Endpoint doesn't really go for any challenge towards middle. I mean, they, they kind of sit a little bit passive towards T spawn, right? Oh my gosh, does Crucial really have dual Berettas out? I'm a fan. One of the first even trades I think we've seen in this battle. And finally, it looks like the CT side have 
or stem point into a rotation in the other direction. The issue is, I think they have also started to realize that they're only leaving one player, except for the, I think, the one round that actually worked out. Mm -hmm. I really like this boost up. I guess it gives a bit of a surprise angle, more of a double peek. That is not the flashbang that Slowy was hoping for. And well, he's not going to leave them blind. He's not going to slow them down. He's going to have so much pressure coming in. I think the Molotov failed, though. Slightly missed. Doesn't land. The smokes will hold them out, but the push has come through, and that risk might not pay off. Hoodie almost falling. But that free kill could make all the difference in the boost up. It's a prime position. I don't even think Endpoint realized where they were being killed from. It says through the smoke, so maybe on their end it was. But nonetheless, Harvey have got their second round. But I, I do sort of wonder, maybe if that Molotov lands, it could be a very different story. Well, it should have been slowly dead, I would imagine. I mean, maybe not dead, but it should have prevented him from getting that one kill he did get initially when they were entering the site. Because that would have flushed him out of that spot, either forced him over towards CT spawn or forced him deeper into site where potentially he would have been traded out or he would have just died without getting a single kill. But yeah, it's kind of unfortunate, but the same thing, at the same time, you know, slowly kind of messed up his flashbang. That would have delayed the push a little bit longer and maybe have allowed some time for rotation to come in a little bit quicker. Looks like they're just going to bombard the A site, though. The amount of flashes being thrown pretty much off the bat here have even left me blind. Surreal's taking a lot of damage through a Molotov down to 58 HP. They're not really showing much force, just more utility out of Havu, and they bought themselves a little bit of time. Though it seems like Endpoint do want to commit towards the site. Understandable as thus far there. I think there's only been a, a single round where they've failed to take a site control. And a lot of the other times, the aggression from Harvu has actually been more of a blunder than a success. Once again, though, we're going to have this full execution. Molotov's being expended to clear the close angles. There's actually a boost, but Zor kind of gets left down to dry. And it's going to be Zori cleared out as well. The entries coming in from Endpoint. Perfect. They couldn't really ask for anything better. Two entry kills onto the player at the back of the site. The smoke leaves them completely out of the round. And it's just a one and done for Harvu. Looking like just saving those AKs, which, while well, you can understand, they'll have enough money to drop back over the AWP. But it's funny. One of the early successes of this half was Zori's ability to find picks with the AWP. And in this round, nothing. I mean, I feel like that's almost a strategy that's, like, destined to fail eventually. Like, to have him do it once, you know, it's a whole, like, one, you know, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me kind of thing. And I don't think Endpoint are going to really allow him to play around the smokes like he was doing before. They, they see he's really, you know, uh, willing to push through smokes, play on top of smokes, to come around the side of smokes, but... But then I saw a spray out of Surreal. It actually delays him long enough that Zori can't get around the corner in time that Moneymax gets the nade and he gets finished. I think we've seen some you know, good adaptations out of Endpoint. I, I think they're giving a lot more respect to Havu, even though the score currently does show 8-2. to two. And they're really limiting like the big players. Like Even Slowy hasn't been able to really get going so far this game. Uh, and Dodo, someone I talked about before, has been one of the big fraggers. He's only got five kills. He spreads you know, two sixes, two fives, and a two. But they've not really had those those individual stand up plays so far. And yeah, Thomas down to one health, Dodo down to 20 with the spray through initially. But it seems like end points, like if it's not broken, why fix it? Keep going A if you can keep taking the site and keep winning rounds. Yeah, for sure. And, and again, I, I feel like this compares quite heavily to long control on Dust 2. It's something I feel like you almost need to battle for in the early stages of the round. And then you can just fall back and go for another play but here we go the re-aggression once again this time working out far more successfully although it still trades evenly maybe a little bit of an overface from Saw at the end not needing to take that final fight rotation is going to come back from slowy we'll be able to deny them at least presence around the side of the scaffolding well, they could realistically just walk through it. That's <laughs> that's still an option that they have. There isn't anybody actually defending it, and that's exactly what Mighty Max is going to do. It's a big risk. You don't know where your opponent is on the other side, and the one real worry is the fact that Zori's now in such an aggressive position. Like He's facing off on the, the sandbags. He's got so many positions to check at the same time. The T's have gone walking all the way in, and I, I don't think they've checked for it. It's a free kill. 
And with 15 seconds left, this is going to become a retrieval mission now for Robin. Doesn't know where the second player is. The flashbang's on point, but he has to go running. And Zori should have done it all on his own. It doesn't matter that he's not connecting the shots. Robin can oh. kill one off, but he will go down just before the time is up. It will be a third round, a very costly one for Harbu. But at least they're back on the board once again. Tom, 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 why, why did Zori challenge in the last one second of the round? I don't. Confidence. I, I, I mean, I don't give a crap about confidence. Like you can <laughs> lose the round right there. Like they had no time to plant. You just hide behind sandbags. You win the round, but he challenges either way. I mean, he takes the gun away, which obviously does limit the economy a bit here. But that was really all too close, to be honest. That aggressive position, like you were saying, on sandbags, it wasn't checked out. He maybe would have been able to see them going towards rafters, but instead he just plays it super safe. But to think of how that round started was basically just the uh, initial spam through. And we saw the flashbangs come in and they just kind of dropped in on top of them. And that's what I was talking about earlier in one of the rounds where we saw Javi get very aggressive towards ramp. It seemed like they were missing that that flash to allow it. Oh my god, that Ooh. boost. That's just disgusting. Zori can't get a break. I think they gave him a break in the last round. You can only, <laughs> True. You can only get a moment. For but so long. Let me ask you, Tom, why why haven't we seen Havu show really any presence towards middle? I mean, obviously we have the ability to see what's happening around the map at all times, but like endpoint, they're not really putting anyone there to stop any aggression. I guess it's because some of the other rounds they've just been so quick into the A site, they can't really afford to leave personnel elsewhere, and there's too much pressure coming in on other aspects of the map. It would give them a chance for a fast flank, but I guess it's not a risk they really want to take. Mighty Max is lucky to be alive and Hoodie alongside Saur is holding down this site. We're finally seeing a step up from a couple of the players, but crucial. Surreal still going strong. Hoodie, however, keeps them in this oh. round. It's left onto Crucial. He's just not missing a beat. Goes for the shot through the box, but we'll change up to the AK. Only 10 seconds left on the clock. He has to go for the plant. Does he fake it out? No, he allows Hoodie to get that little bit closer, but he'll have the chance. Peeks out and wins it as well. A 4K for Crucial, exactly when they needed him. And the CT side's economy is going to be wrecked again, Jason. I thought that round was over. I thought Havu had that. Everyone was hitting shots. Like when they walked up into the A site, headshot. Walking towards the, the scaffold, headshot. And yet, Crucial with the 4K, that flick on a slowy on the flank too was phenomenal. And... Well, as I was talking about middle presence, I mean, they do it in, the pit, in a round that they're basically saving. Hoodie only had the USP. Well done here to Venpoint. Looking to get themselves into double digits in the first map here of the Grand Finals. And what a way to do it as well. Individual players stepping up. He's like, everyone at Endpoint are starting to hit their shots. And I'm getting a little bit worried. Maybe what Thomas said before about training and having a plan. Which I'll be honest, I, I don't think I've ever said that about a UK roster before. I don't want to be <laughs> harsh, but... Like, th this team is easily the best UK team I've ever watched. Well, I mean, let's be honest, there hasn't really been those teams that stick around long enough to really work on the problems that they have within a roster. Because, like, every time there's, like, you know, I, I feel like eventually you're just going to be, like, you know, let down. It's like every time you get built up, like, oh, my God, we can finally have a team. And then, oh, they broke up next day. Maybe this is the rise of UKCS. Maybe Smuya won't be the only one recognized within... The world of Counter-Strike coming from the country. Yeah, Alex too. Forgot about him. But let's see though. Endpoint still with four players live up against the three. They slowed the pace down. You can see slowly over towards the B side by himself. It's going to be surreal there, I think, to push in that direction if they want to potentially catch them out. And it might work out. I mean, again, Slowey's had a very rough game so far. You know, I praised him before as being a player who stands out, you know, quite a few times. And, and albeit, he's really not that far behind the top frag of his team. But he hasn't had those standout moments that I that I picture in my head when I talk about Havu. And maybe there's a chance here. He's going to get around the side and, well, <laughs> you build him up just to break him down. It seems surreal. We're going to see Zori respawn, but it's still going to be the three on two. And again, the smokes are perfect. But Hoodie, look at this. He's flanking from behind and crucial. You shouldn't be able to expect this. Oh, he thought someone might be coming, but definitely not that soon. This is... One of the best opportunities we've seen, but Robin turns it into a two-on-one. They know where he's coming from. Hoodie does manage the first kill. It's Mighty Max knowing exactly where he is, and he peaks the angle and wins the battle. There's been so many rounds now. In fact, 
There's been four rounds won just on the T side where they've only had one player surviving. And then you include one of the rounds actually won on the CT side as well with only one player. It's been some very close ones. Unfortunately, they always seem to be in crunch moments where the economy just doesn't quite work out for Harvu. Not been going well for them so far. And Oh, obviously this... I'll be honest, this seemed like a must-win map, like especially going into train. Like It's not one of the better ones for Endpoint, but if they win this as, as dominantly as it's looking, who knows? I, I'm almost wishing we had like a post-map interview <laughs> just to talk to, to Thomas again and be like, wow, that, that was a hell of a first map here out of them. And Havu, I mean, they're obviously a very experienced team, a very drilled team. I still wouldn't necessarily count them on the series if they do lose map one. I mean, you can see here, even Hoodie just able to shine. Finally, some middle presence out of Endpoint to try to push against them, and they do punish it. But even 11-4 for Endpoint first half, like, how, how could you be, ever be disappointed with that if you're on the team? Oh, yeah, it's it's fantastic. I, I, they're doing very, very well on the T side, and, well, we're going to have to see something impressive from Harvard, at least maybe getting themselves a, a bit more of a lifeline here. Thomas pushing through the smoke, handing the bomb. The CT side, a, a bit of an early present in what is the final round of the half. Crucial and surreal. Try and fight this back. They've got so little time. Three, maybe make that four players waiting for them on the A site. Shouldn't be any chance. They've still got a full belt of utility, but they're actually just trying to sneak their way through, find some sort of opener. And after what has been a, an onslaught of endpoint rounds, the last one is as clean as it gets for Harvu. Yeah, it's just a shame it comes so late in the uh, actual half there. You can see Thomas 15 kills, Money Max on 10. I mean, everyone is just performing. If, if the top is 15 and the lowest is 9, but the median is, you know, more around 11, that's really not that bad. I mean, it means everyone's doing their part. And now on the CT side, I mean, this is, I think we're going to see the real caliber of both teams. If Endpoint continue this domination, then I feel like that's going to be rough for Havu. But again, you're not going to sleep on Havu at all comes down to if their T-side strats have really been flushed out and developed here. Because Endpoint are on the cusp of only being one map away from winning the Grand Finals. A pistol round would almost seal this map, give them that, that early advantage financially, and basically leave Harvu with either four spies or just giving themselves so few mistakes that you'd, you'd bet that they wouldn't be able to do it. They've invested into a couple of P250s here. Now, it seemed like the plan was to fight the CT side on ramp. Now, if you look at the setup that's currently there for Endpoint, they're not even fighting for A. Like, they've got one player sat all the way back. That's Mighty Max. He's just peeking in to spot if anybody runs through. And then the next closest player is Robin, who's actually watching mid. So these P250s, not really going to be too beneficial but there should, unless Mighty Max does something incredible, the rotation is very, very fast, be a bomb plant. I mean, that's if they're going to be going into the A side. It seems like they've kind of faked things out. They're actually backing away towards B. And those P250s, well, let's we'll see if it's going to work for them on the side over here. If they actually do commit for it. I don't know, maybe a little bit of fake coming in. Thomas just snapping Dodo out of the sky. Looks like it will come into the after plant situation here, but the problem is Endpoint haven't really lost a player. They have a kit and they already have themselves a two-man advantage. Love it, using the nade onto the plant. It was something I mentioned earlier, but it's something they pulled out in the pistol round and now it is left onto those P250s. Zori now with only 12 HP trying to cling to life Jesus. and surreal. Just headshots two players right at the end. This is looking so clean from Endpoint. A bomb plant at least. It was something they pretty much set up for. That does mean that, okay, there's some extra money and maybe Harvey can take the risk here and go for an investment in this round rather than waiting it out. And honestly, I, I think that's the right call. It's something teams do anyway, but when you're this far behind, when you're looking at an eight round deficit, only 17 rounds into the game, you, you have to start taking a few risks to try and get yourself back in. I did want to touch on that nade, by the way, that came in with a double nade to stop them from planning. I was actually thinking, like, why don't we see that more often, even in gun rounds? 
I mean, obviously the nades used a little bit early just to kind of soften up your targets if you potentially can land them. But hey, if you take down the planter, like that buys yourself some time that the smokes will potentially fade away. Either way, though, early damage being taken by Hoodie as well as Robin. It it just seems like Endpoint are more kind of fluid on their CT side. Like we're seeing more of like a quote unquote standard map hold. I'm not saying for Vertigo, but you have like two towards B. You have one in CT to rotate back towards A if you needed. You have two on the A site. So kind of like a 2 1 2 that you would see on a couple different maps. They're not really too worried about the initial hold, right? They're more than happy, it seems, to play for the after play situation. Which is about if they can launch the utility to make that happen. Already crucial, dancing around the site with the MP9. He's going to get traded out, but even still such a heavy advantage. And Dotto, uh, he probably should have just gone for that plant, in all honesty. The extra money could have made a big difference, and it's dead. They do a bit of damage, but it doesn't really matter. 13 to 4, this almost has to be an eco round. Maybe a couple of pistols bought up for Harvu. And instead of that, just going to be waiting for their buy once again. I legit thought Dodo was gonna actually just throw the bomb at them as <laughs> like a weapon, like, ugh, just throw it and hope they get shot midair. You know, like a gas tank on a car and explode in their face. But either way, endpoint now 13 to 4, and this is a, a pretty damn clean gun round for them so far. Obviously, Havu with just the three deagles left. But this is honestly just looking like endpoints map up and down, and, and I'm. I'm really curious to just see Train in particular. Like, I think we heard Thomas say earlier on they've been kind of working on their maps, right? Trying to flesh out their map pool a little bit more, make them more of an overall stronger team. And so far, Vertigo's looking good. And there's always that potential for Train to follow suit as the pressure will start to rise. But look at Slowey. He's got behind two players. Quick two one digs comes through. I guess he gave up middle control. And now it's going to be tough here for Endpoint to, to retake this off the bat if they can get this bomb into the site. This is looking like Mom. Maybe that one lifeline that potentially turns the tide a little bit here because they've left a, a big opening for a rotation to come through. An AK has been retrieved. Another rifle in the hands. Blowy. And now Mighty Max is left to try and clutch this one out, not knowing where the, the second player currently sits. It's a almost just trade frag position at the moment being played by Slowy, knowing that he doesn't have the armor and they peek together and get that final kill. A, a let off, really. As Endpoint were very, very close to closing out this map instead. Well, financially now, they're not in the best of positions. They're going to force by. If they lose that, we could be seeing seven, maybe eight rounds on the board for Harvu before we get any proper resistance. Hey, really well done. Not as slowly again. Someone has been a little bit quiet for those big brain plays. We finally do see one breakthrough into round 18. The Mighty Max, he's going to have the M4. So they've actually kind of invested in Sisto and everything into this round. Thomas just gets the one dig on a Dodo. Again, not going to be rescued, but already an early man advantage here towards the CT side. And look at Crucial. I don't think Slow is going to expect this. Oh, no. He will. <laughs> I thought he was going to continue to push him towards the site. But Crucial will fall. And the rotations will come through. And Mighty Max, again, able to trade out one. This is, this is looking possible, especially with that D coming up from Thomas. Two versus two. Of course, the weaponry firmly in the favor of the T's. And hopefully for their sake, they've now managed to rectify it. The Molotov quite bouncing the way they would have liked and surreal. Well, it's, it's a slim chance, but a chance nonetheless if he can somehow isolate one of these jewels. But realistically, the positions currently being held should at least... Give a trade, if not just an insta kill. What is that shot from Surreal, though? He's not going to get the chance to go for the second, but dear lord, that was ridiculous. I'm I'm glad I wasn't drinking water because I would have straight spit that out everywhere. Oh my god, the instant headshot coming through. I mean, Thomas on 20 kills now, 14, 14, 15, and nine for the rest of the team. Even though endpoint. I've lost the last couple of rounds. It's not been easy for Havu to win them. Come down to the one-on-twos. It's come down to the one-on-ones. And well now with Endpoint having nothing invested into this round, this should be a relatively clean round coming in for Havu, though we do have the stack coming towards the A site this time here at Endpoint. 
I swear, I, the, the shots they've been hitting with the Deagles here for the CT side have just been fantastic. There's really no other way to describe it. It definitely looks like they're in form coming into this match. The thing is, you can't afford to give Harvu anything. So we'll, we'll see. Like, and until the game is over, it's never over. And like, if I've learned anything from Finnish... Well, just people in general. It doesn't seem like they really crumble <laughs> under any sort of pressure. Uh, humor is something that sometimes uh, falls away from them. Let's put it that way. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that they're just going to be looking this on a round-to-round -round basis, trying to get themselves back in. Max will hit a dink. He spotted a couple of players. It seems like the rest of the team is still gambling on the B site. It's a risk that hasn't paid off, unfortunately, and will mean that this will be... A very easy round for the Finns. Yeah, maybe they're just trying to not give any extra money to the uh, the T side because honestly, their money's not looking really that good at the moment either. I mean, slowly's gonna be on thirty one hundred. It seems like they will just look to stay alive here. So one of those patented one kill rounds. But credit to Habu to not let that first half really get in their heads. I mean, all in all, Hoodie's on twenty kills. Like he's kind of just snuck up there on the on the scoreboard for me. I mean, Zori and Slowy are both at 12 apiece, Dodo at 9, and Saw at 5. It's starting to I'll look a lot better here. I like the position that Surreal's currently playing. It's, it's just one of those, like, sort of sweaty angles that you play. There's one just next to it as well. There's some sandbags you can boost up on. And if uh, people walk through B, you can basically have a, an angle just over the stairs as they walk up. And I guarantee 99% of people will not check that spot. Mainly because I play that spot all the time and always get a kill. <laughs> I like playing my sweaty angles because I'm not very good at the game. <laughs> That's just, I mean, I should learn the spots then, I guess. <laughs> if they work for you, then they're, def they're definitely... Ooh, okay. They have a chance for me as they do rush in towards the A side up the ramp. It's going to be the one-for-one -one trade initially, and I don't know how... Mighty Max is really going to get out of the spot if they do Molotov it in, but it seems like he's just going to be able to sneak away with the help of the smoke. He'll play within it, but Saw's going to hear him out, and Saw's going to get the kill. There were a decent amount of early damage done. Thomas still within the site, and a rotation coming in from Robin as well. Smokes, though, are going to make things very awkward, and the counter utility they have is only really to slow them down. Keeping this rod up as finally the bomb is going to be planted. This is not really looking like a retakeable position for Endpoint. They, they don't have a huge amount of utility. Sure, the smokes can at least create their own wall back in, but they don't have a kit. So whatever they're planning on doing, they have to do it very quickly. And a lot of it's going to rely on just individual brilliance. Now, the flashbang does at least force a couple off the angle. Thomas trying to get into this more aggressive position, but they need to get someone on that bomb, and it, it's just not happening. Surreal left alone, one versus two. Just trying to maybe do as much damage as he can. There's a chance that he could kill off Sorry through this smoke, and he will get the kill. But as mentioned, the time is too far gone. A very costly round for Harvu, and again, they just about scrape it through. But the fact is, Endpoint is still going to come in with a worse buy in the next round. That one kit might have been enough. Should have been enough, I think, right? To win the round here for Endpoint. And even with the 11 4 first half, Habu have been just taking round after round after round, even though it's come close a few times. I'm gonna have to shut that window because those people are having a barbecue outside and screaming and cheering. And while well, I'm here casting some Counter Strike and watching him. Tenshi Habu build a pole a comeback here as Slowy just walks straight into Crucial and gets the initial kill. The A side's gonna be very open as it's just gonna be Mighty Max left alone. Maybe the rotation on the Robin can help out, but that, that Molotov should seal the fate. I don't even know how Mighty Max ran across that fast. He somehow survives and the push towards B gets some two kills. And these these rounds so close, and Mighty Max has managed to get a pick off the back of it. Once again, we sit in a two versus four. Harvey definitely not making their life easy and don't know what these two players are going to be able to do. Zori's managed to get quite far into the A site, though. 
looking to try and clear some of these remaining angles. There's not actually anybody looking in this direction. I imagine it's going to be quite a confusing position. And Zori's not going to check. This is a free kill for Robin. It's just gone from bad to worse. They were given so much control. And now Hoodie, one versus four. Their money actually becoming a bit of an issue as well after losing so many players in the last couple of rounds. And Bomb Plant would be nice just to secure a purchase into the next round without any real trouble. Instead, he goes hunting and Robin is going to put the final nail in the coffin. 14 to 8. This is crunch time now for Harvu. They lose this round and they'll come back in with 1,900 loss bonus and well, basically hand endpoint the match. Yeah, I mean, the first round and... The last four straight here for Havu. An endpoint. I mean, that push towards B catches them off guard. And again, we haven't really seen too much crazy aggressive play at a endpoint that we saw out of Havu challenging towards ramp a few times. Oh. But he's going to be a little bit frustrated by that. Just took 32 damage from that incendiary. Gives away his position as well. You can see Robin was just kind of waiting to. And even endpoint's going for a little bit of mid control that we didn't really see out of Havu at all. And we're obviously not seeing the stacks come out of. The CT side that we saw Hava do. But yeah, tough times here for the Finns. Lose this round, you might have lost the map. And slowly, unfortunately, not going to be gifted a kill on the Crucial. Over towards Scaffold here in the start of the round. He doing very well. He actually what? catches Robin jumping. Very easy kill for him. One-handed, in fact. Thomas is going to have a bit of a dicier duel, but it works out. Still sticks them in a 4v4, and now the remainder of the T's are going to try and put pressure onto this A site. They've spotted men in middle and maybe expecting to find a bit more of an opening here. They don't actually have a Molotov to clear out what is a free position. Max, an easy kill for him. Crucial. Puts another in the body bag and leaves just Hoodie and Zori again. A four versus two situation. Zori a little bit sneaky with his play through the smoke. He's going to net them one more. The nade really going to do anything as it bounces back and clips off the wall. Even still, though, Thomas with another impactful kill. In fact, he'll close out the round. His 24th of this game so far. An endpoint for on map point. That's going to be fun to see them in the future talking about that. And point on map point and Mojavu. They've got no money really. 41 for Slowey. The bottom of the table going to be on Dodo on 2700. And uh, we're going to see some pistols. Maybe it's going to be a fast play in towards one of these sites. Maybe towards B because we do have some Tech 9s bought up. It seems... Robin might be prepared for this, though. Or are they going to come in and... Well, they actually might look to be aggressive yet again. Maybe leave him down there by himself with the help of the smoke to buy some time, as you were talking about before. About Inferno and Banana and Almighty. I mean, he does get two kills, but he basically just did. Leave Saw on 12 HP. Oh, oh! my gosh, Hoodie. That shot was so slick. Sure, it's a pre-fire angle. It's a common angle, but... Just oh, walk in like that, and Surreal's just denied the plant. That's going to buy some extra time for the rotation. Dotto yet to actually find a gun. In fact, he's going to go pushing. They didn't expect it. They've been lining up nades from that position plenty of times, and maybe he doesn't need the gun. The Tech 9 is back. 15 to 9. Harvu survive once again, and the CTs, they've got just about enough money to spread the wealth. It'll be an AWP for Crucial, a Glass Cannon 1 at that. In fact, Surreal is going to pick up another complete change in strategy to what we've seen prior. Maybe not necessary. It could actually un turn out to be a problem, especially with a Mac 10 on Saw. Oh, no. Does Zora just get knifed? Yes. What, were you saying that with confidence or just agreeing with I me because you're not it. sure? Okay, I, I heard, heard it too, it. He but I wasn't. Knife. I was like, wait, I was yawning at the same time for some reason, so I wasn't sure if it was just my ears. They yeah, had double up, and the change up might catch him off guard. Crucial, he's gonna be holding the angle here, and well, he's gonna fall to Slowey. Already one of those ops just being completely mitigated. Mighty Max again, the sandbags have just not been his position. Smoke's gonna at least buy him some time, however. Do have a nade out of Hoodie that they could potentially throw in, though Hoodie's over in towards middle, and Surreal, well, he's gonna expect it at least. So able to pull it back down to a four on four. Though Mighty, he's left to his, himself. I don't know how he's going to escape from this. And Thomas through the smoke. Mighty on top of the sandbags here. We'll get some damage done, but 
Still gonna come down to the three on three. Bomb. I'm gonna start making this way over to this A site a little bit further behind and it will mean some of the smokes have faded. They actually don't have any more. This is a real issue. They, they can't actually section off the site. There's gonna be clear vision for the majority of players. I think they've started to call into question whether or not it's actually a push in this direction, but they need to try and actually get rid of Thomas if they're going to stand a chance. Gun is going to be retrieved. Thomas should know there's someone from this angle. Flashback is good, and it's actually going to get them to kill. A lot of damage done in return, and yeah, they had fallen hook, line, and sinker into a push on the other side. And while they wait, both kills are found. Economy now an issue again for endpoint. As said, until this game is over, I'm, I'm not going to be singing any sort of God Save the Queen or British song. It's just one of those lady? things. <laughs> Sorry, you I should... can be if you want me to be, Jake. Hey, I mean, I've seen that picture of you in the wig. Pink hair looks good on you, Tom. <laughs> the beard, not so much with the pink hair. Maybe if I dye the beard pink as well. Oh, Matt. Yeah, I'm sold. Ooh. All right, Surreal again. Deagle comes through, gets a kill. So no uh, weapon are achieved at the moment, though. And, I mean, even though Endpoint only have pistols, they still have Surreal on a Deagle. And we've already seen what the boys from UK can do with that weapon. And they do have at least the majority of players over at this A site. One with unlikely results for Endpoint, but... A chance for maybe a little bit of economy stabilization for the Finns. Already a little bit of cost caused, and of course, in this sort of round, lots of risks can be taken. Actually, Zori and Sora have both taken a fair amount of damage here. They, they do have to be careful that they don't just let weaponry slip into their opponent's hands. Saw, though, with a fantastic spray. Sure, he goes down in the end, but ultimately. Not a bad position whatsoever, and Robin will meet the same fate eventually. 15-11. Coreline slowly being brought back from what was an 11-3 half at one point. Well, ET side at least have the maximum loss bonus. They only need a single round of the next four, but pressure's definitely on them now. I feel like we're... Just kind of repeating ourselves to insanity. The amount of times we... Oh, wow. Crucial. Saw the lineup get some good damage in. But we just feel like we, we say so often that teams sometimes just struggle to close out games. And this... It might be one of those times here for Endpoint. We've seen it happen quite a bit in Lost Rising so far. I'm just not going to count them out just yet. But neither will I for Havu. As they've honestly been playing well. I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily Endpoint not being able to close it out. Or Havu just really stepping up when they needed to. Almost to a train looming as the uh, second map here, which is Hapu's choice. This is definitely a map that Endpoint would like to secure, just to kind of give them that, that leeway, that extra breath in the series. If potentially the strats they have prepared for train just don't work out. And it left on the clock for... Harvu as they do make a play in towards the safe site once again. They've thrown a smoke into middle, maybe to try and bait a couple of rotations, and so far it seems relatively successful. Push crucial though is gonna spot out everything. The initial kill goes his way as Mighty Max just looks to waste. That's getting spammed through the wall, but the issue now is that the teaser are starting to run out of time. 25 seconds to make their play. Onto the site, you can see Thomas still wary about the peak from behind, but Dotto just got running in. Two entry kills exactly when they needed it. The bomb is going to be planted. He takes the bullets through the smoke, and Zori is going to be able to defend that plant. Robin, however, with a quick jump up, turns it back into a 2v2. However, the T's have now fallen back into their after plants. A plant all the way over to the right hand of the site, and both players just waiting with open arms for these peaks to come back in. Watching for Robin and Hoodie and Zuri will do enough to close out that round, but I feel like Dotto is definitely the, the unsung hero of that one. A fast play in with only 15 seconds left and getting both players on the site. Oh yeah, I mean, just running straight through and mowing them down like a bulldozer. 
It was a shame for Endpoint, though, because like there was like 25, 30 seconds left, and they had no utility left to delay, and they had no utility left to go for a retake. No smoke to block them off. And up against a double op. Well, they definitely need at least a flashbang to get themselves in there. So really well done here out of Havu. Truly just drain out every little bit Endpoint had. And Mighty Max, well, he just seems to love sandbags or love concrete. This is again going to be behind another patch of them. Except this time he's going to rotate before Molotov comes in. Or before any danger comes his way. And again, we're seeing Endpoint go for the aggressive play towards B. Just holding the finish in that choke. And crucial timing. Perfect on the slowy. Down to 44 health. And again, it's just Deagles here for Endpoint. At least have a couple of smokes to delay or a couple of smokes for the retake. And I think Hover just looking to... Maybe bait them out, even Dota watching for the flank. Time. Gonna start their execution with a little bit more time on the clock and already forcing some awkward positions. Max does still manage to get one. The trade is back thick and fast, maybe not realizing Crucial's in the same position. The bomb gonna be dropped. Now the full rotation of the CT site can begin. Zori denies the hold of that AK-47 and another comes up for Slowy as well. Surreal, maybe a bit of a surprise position again, making this close, making it costly. The T's have been so good at coming back from these situations though. And they will do it once again. A 15-13 scoreline, so many rounds where they've had casualties. In fact, not a clean round in the last five in a row that they've won. A 2-3-3-2-2 two, three, three, two, two in terms of survival rate, but... They are clawing this back, Jason. It's been a while since Endpoint have won a round. And, well, we can tell that, especially because the match is still going. <laughs> Very true. I, I feel bad, though, for Surreal in that last round. Because he gets the kill on the man right in the corner towards the site. He picks up an AK and he, like, looks to back away. But he gets caught trying to escape, I guess. Or maybe he's trying to throw a flashbang or, or something in. If he stays alive, they have so much extra pressure on that bomb from being planted. He has really crucial kills coming in for the side of Havu. And in another round where Havu don't really have the, the best of starts here. I mean, slow is low, slow, uh, saw is low, crucial though. He's gonna get double naded <laughs> out. That sandbag position has been held so many times by endpoint the CT side that Havu can almost guarantee a player is gonna be there almost every round. It's usually just Mighty Max to be there though. Oh, timing just about works out for Slowey and. These might even have to start considering whether or not it's worth even going for anything here. It's been an a site bombardment almost every single round for Harvey, but I wonder if we're finally going to see them flip the switch and, and hit B. I, I don't think we've really seen that at all, but then again, if you win five rounds in a row, keep going A, like keep doing it. There's only going to be one man anywhere near the action. Unfortunately for Surreal, he's on the wrong side of the wall, so you have to try and ram back around and... He'll be dead, and yeah, they've got no choice. They've got to save. They, they can't fight this round. They've been attempting it pretty much every single time, but the fact is, at this point, Jason, this is screaming for an overtime because the CT side are going to go into the next round with still a player with maybe an SMG, maybe a FAMAS, and, well, it'll be the worst buy we've seen from them in a while, and none of their other buys have succeeded. Well, Tom, and honestly, it wouldn't be you and I casting together if we don't have a very one-sided first half that goes the full way. And luckily for us, it's at a, a very awesome time considering we're here to the Grand Finals. Man, Max is to get one kill. I, again, he's trying to peek into this, but they just need to save these weapons. The off would be perfect to have for Crucial in another round, but they're going to be chased down and we'll get the first kill and the second Robin big time out of him. He at least keep the M4, but the op, or sorry, the AK, but the op would have been perfect. Even one final kill at the end of the round, but it doesn't matter. Have to have money. An end point? Well, they don't. Oh. Havu social media team are doing their very best to jinx their squad by putting up a tweet saying OT or question mark. So obviously now this is going to be a 16-14 victory in favor of Endpoint because they've tweeted that. But uh, yeah, th this is where Endpoint might do something a little bit crazy. Like you, you, you need a cheesy round. You need a round that might not work nine times out of ten. But if it works just this once, that's fine. 
Just get it over the line. They were the better team for the first half. They started this one off strong. Even going to get a couple of rounds in the middle where I, I think you and I both can agree. It, it looked like it was done. And 100%. then a six-round streak for Harvu. And nothing really looks like it's going to stop them here. The, the players who were stepping up have gone a little bit quiet or they've been able to get a kill or two with maybe a deeg or find a shot on the rifle. But ultimately, every single time, the Finns have been resilient enough to win the round. And wow, if you look at the buy that's currently coming up for Endpoint, it's, as I said, it's not going to be one of their best. You've got a, a FAMAS, USMGs, a fair amount of utility, the AK saved by Robin. There's a chance that they can make this one work, but they're going to have to do something special. Well, Tom, you did say the Finns seem to, to bounce back. I, I think Dota was honestly a major factor in that. Thinking back to the round they did lose, and then they had basically no money into the, the follow-up round. That potentially could have been the game for Endpoint right there, or the map. And then Dota with a Tech-9 just pushes the last two players in a two-on-two -two with a Tech-9. Catches them out. A couple rounds before, he saves the round yet again. With 25 seconds left on the push into sight with the AK. Well, there, there was a round as well. I think it was slow. He got uh, two kills with a Deagle, and then they managed to clutch that one out when mm -hmm. all they had was Deagles. That was one of the first rounds they won in this half, so... There's been a few defining moments where I think if Endpoint watched this back, they could have made their job much, much easier. But maybe, just maybe, they can close it out here. Only a minute left on the clock for regulation, at least, as we do see pressure being put on this A site once again. I don't know why you wouldn't if you're Harvu. Uh, I think we've only seen one round of the last six end up on the B site, and that was after already doing the majority of the damage. Once again, this Molotov is going to force a player out of position, and we will see the T side gain control of the A site. There's nothing that could really be done. However, this is what they set up for. Their risky play. They saved their utility. They've thrown almost nothing down. They're leaving it all onto the retake, and the double nade to start has done a hell of a lot of damage. The push comes in and Mighty Max gets the opening jewel. It's taken a long time, however, and the counter flashbang will hold them back just a little bit longer. However, they do have kits. They're finding rifles along the way. This is the best chance that Endpoint have had in a while. However, Zori is waiting. He's got the AWP. Two men already fall to this man and it's left all onto Robin. One versus three, otherwise it's overtime. And I'll be honest, Jason, there's nothing he can do. Even just going to run away, it's meaningless at this point. Harvu have done it. They brought it back from the depths and taken us to OT. One smoke, I think, just determined whether or not that was going into overtime or not. Because Zori was given an angle off the side of the smoke. And was able to get the two kills to stop the push from coming through. I'm not sure if they had a second smoke at the, so uh, at the time. I know Robin had one at the very end, though. I don't know if he picked it up off of a dead body. I did like, as you pointed out, the double nade, the, the kind of plane for the retake and set up for some early damage, but it doesn't work out. And, well, what a way to kick off the grand finals. OT in our first map in this best of three. And end point, they've already struggled a lot on the CT side. And now they're going to be pretty much stuck on it for the next three rounds, unfortunately, for them. They win this first round. I think they're going to be absolutely kicking themselves. Already, Mighty Max has got that opening pick. and See what looks like a, a bit of an audacious boost coming in. An attempt to spot somebody that up high, but ultimately, as of right now, not going to see anything at all. Hoodie. Already tagged down as well. As already mentioned, though, they've been good at bringing back a fair few of these rounds. Rounds where they've lost early picks and it's taken somebody to save them. And there's been plenty of heroes on the Harvu side thus far. Even if they were to go on to lose this one, I feel like they'd be filled with confidence going into their map choice. But they have the chance for 2-0 to come into play. Mighty Max, he grabs his second of the round, goes peeking in, though. Doesn't expect a fight from elsewhere. And once again, it turns. But it's left all onto Zori. Finds two in a matter of seconds. Leaves Surreal. And they finally break back. It's been a streak of, I think, seven rounds now. They don't want this eighth to be added. Saw he's been one of the quieter members. But even he will clutch it out as well. Harvu with their 16th. 
a clutch in a 1v3 and it seems like nothing, absolutely nothing will work for Endpoint. Daw had, I swear, like five kills when everyone else in his team had like 15 or more. And I don't even care about those five only kills he had. I don't care about that that point anymore because that round alone pretty much just saved his team and really deserved or shown that he deserves to be on this team right there. That was a phenomenal play out of him at such a crucial time. I mean, if Endpoint win that round, it's finally that, that pressure off the shoulders, right? Of like, oh, finally, we can take a round on the CT side. It feels like it's been forever, but the pain train just keeps rolling across. And Endpoint just haven't been able to find where this train stops. Once again, a solid start. The CT side, they've got the opening pick, but as in last round, I said there's been plenty of ways that Harvu turned the tide. Seems like maybe the pressure has got to them a little bit because in the early stages, it was all too easy to close out rounds, and now it's seeming like the toughest task we've ever seen. This time, though, it's looking good. Just two players stand in their way, Hoodie. We'll get an open at Nord again. Zori's brought one back as well. The plant will be available as the rotation comes in. A smoke thrown down just to deny the Molotov. Hoodie wins another duel. 2v5 to 2v2. Jason is only a couple of defenders remain, and I don't understand how they seem to bring this back. Zori will burn, however. Robin with his best chance yet. He's had plenty of clutches, plenty of attempts. He's going to tap the bomb, try and bait in Hoodie, and they've finally done it. A 5v2 almost slipped away, but thankfully the Swede is there to save them. I, I, I just... I'm, I'm, I'm flabbergasted, like... End point again. I mean, I know I'm not one of the best players in the world, but they keep challenging aim battles up against Havu. It's five on two, and, and I guess maybe the, the confidence got to them there, but they, they challenge out. Havu just hits the shot against them. They keep getting these one-on-one -on -one duels, and then Havu almost wins another round. It came down to five players to take down two. I can't say that enough. Either way, Endpoint do finally break the curse here. They finally get themselves around, but Havu is still looking like the better team at the moment. And hopefully Endpoint can kind of recall their earlier form of that T side, because it went 11-3 at one point for them, finished off 11-4. Maybe that one round's all they really need on the CT side. It's all they needed before. Let's see, Surreal on the MP9. Thomas already off the bat with some really good kills coming through, but Hoodie's gonna respawn with a shot through the wall. But still, even three on four, I, I, I'm not saying this is a done round for Endpoint, from what we've just seen in the last few. Oh, Dodo. Happened previously, and he's done it again. It was slowy before, right? With the yeah. decoy that you're talking about. Game control. They're struggling to kill him. That was a really awkward fight for both players. The rotations being... But Max wins the duel. It looks like Chloe had him dead to rights, and... Well, they do find a resurgence. Two rounds on the CT side. The T was definitely where they were favored. It was a long time ago that we saw them battle on that T side and plenty of things have gone wrong since then, throwing a, a fairly big lead. Hoodie coming up now with 32 kills. Question is, can Harvu fix? Can they change what went wrong? Will having all this extra utility, the double orb setup be enough? Or can Endpoint now close out a match which has taken them a long, long time? I would imagine the hit's going to be coming back towards the A side. Another round for them. Are they going to look to change some things up? Saw, he looks to be kind of feeling himself again. Kind of the quote-unquote underperformer of the first half. And phew, took an entire clip. But Dodo got there against Thomas. And Hoppin now with the man advantage. It's going to be a... Oh, well, of course. Of course. Jason, he says the team has a man advantage, and it turns out they lose two people just like that. Endpoint now, four on three with the take towards A. This is slow, he does have a knot, but it wasn't that impactful on the uh, initial CT side. Oh, 
aggression from Saw. It never really seems to pay off. There will be a trade back, but it's left all onto Slowy. Now he's found that first. They know exactly where he is. Are they actually just going to start a rotation? It seems like a good call. Of course, Slowy can't actually make any noise here because if he starts running, well, maybe they'll start running back. They should still at least reset the duel, give both teams a bit more of an opportunity here. Slowy will, however, be waiting, and they expect this. Nade going to be expended just to try and cause a few issues for his vision. And it seems to have succeeded. That first shot not going to connect to the Orpa. And Mighty Max isn't going to give him a second's notice. 18 to 16. We're back to the map points, Jason. It was I'm something they couldn't achieve with, what, five, six map points? Maybe even seven. Who knows at this point? But they've got two more. Now, again, Harvey struggled on the CT side. No. I mean, honestly, we could say the same for Endpoint, because it technically was 11-4 for both halves. And Slowy won't kind of be left to himself here over towards the B side with Hoodie to watch any sort of flank in from middle. Boost up. Not even a boost. Slowy's going to fall. Surreal. I feel like they've capitalized on this position quite a few times now, and it's going to force Hoodie to rotate back to help out. Even forces, it looks like, Dodo to leave the A site, leaving that very susceptible, but most of the T's are already anchored over towards the, the B site direction. With so much time left on the board here, Hobby, we're gonna have to just guess. Oh, Hoodie. Still going strong, has found that equalization. Pressure put into the ramp. This deep smoke never really stopped them in regulation. Doesn't look like it's about to stop them now. It has at least delayed them on the clock a little bit. However, Bomb might have some other ideas. Maybe trying to fake them out a little bit here. We'll leave Hoodie all on his own. And it's understandable that they've taken this risk. Not only is he a top fragger at the moment, but there was such dedication in towards that a site robin looking to now lead the charge he's going in with the bomb this will give all the info they need hoodie's able to get into the back corner they're spamming it through already they gain a man advantage but it's only for a second and look how long's left on the clock they have to go through the monotop and that's oh. round done basically there's nothing they can do here thomas trying to fight this back but there's just not enough time oh my god my butt cheeks Watching Zori try to go for the boost again over the smoke. And then an enemy appears directly behind the head of his, his teammate. That could have been very dangerous, but luckily doesn't kill him off. And Havu will save out the round. Second overtime on the cards, as you kind of mentioned. And now Havu, well, they do have an SMG for Hoodie. But Endpoint at least have the full kit behind them. I, I feel like if A was so successful in the first half, why not? Why, why stray away from it, right? I mean, they did go B the round before, and they did win it. And this time getting shut down, unfortunately. And let's see if Havu can take us to a second overtime here in the first map. Oh, I wouldn't be overly surprised, but they're fighting the ramp. As said, it was never really successful for them. And once again, it's going to go the wrong way. As Thomas, the double entry. He was the hardest player for them to break down on the T side. He's now... Hit his 30 bomb with 32 kills and Dotto on just 14 HP. This has to be the moment for Endpoint. Still two players looking to defend. You can see on the other side of the map, Slowy still hesitant because there have been very quick rotations from Endpoint going back in that other direction. CT side also almost completely out of utility. In fact, on the A site, they are completely out of utility. And now leaves Hoodie all on his own. He's managed to at least find a kill. The bomb is going to be planted, and they've heard him get clipped by the Molotov. So the information's there. They're, in fact, going to burn him out of position. It's all left on to Slowy, and they can't do it, Jason. It took a lot longer than expected.